they, they, they don't want it. They don't want God's Word. Because she held her traditions, she kept the Word of God from being of non-effect. The same now on spiritual Eve. She don't want, she wants to keep her traditions and get away from the Word of God. She holds uh, again to the denominations and her creeds and traditions of her elders instead of taking the Word of God. And when the promise of the Word in the last days is brought to her, she will not receive it because with her traditions, like the Hebrew bride did, the real Word, though manifested, proven, vindicated, she won't have it. Why won't she? Because there's her time. She can't do it. That's right. She can't beat her type. See? It's predicted she'd do it. So how are you going to keep from anything? Now the only thing you do is just be happy you're in. That's all. Amen. All right. God promised in the last days that He would manifest and would vindicate His Word to her. And still she wouldn't do it. All that God promised her by His servants, the prophets, God promised through Jesus Christ. God promised through Joel. God promised through Paul. God promised through Malachi. John, God promised through John the Revelator. All them prophets just did exactly what the last message would be to her. Now, if you want to write them down, of course, you all know them. Jesus, John 14, 12. And Joel, Joel 2, 38. Paul, 2 Timothy 3. Uh, Malachi, 4th chapter. And John the Revelator, uh, Revelation 10, 17, 1 to 17. Exactly what would take place now. Amen. And to the church, what is it? The incarnate Word made flesh amongst His people again. Amen. Amen. And they just don't believe it. Amen. You know what Jesus said when He seen him, when He done them miracles before them and proved that He was God? Proved that what he was doing, he was he had done exactly. He, he said to them, he said, "Oh, you Capernaum, who is exalted into heaven, if the works had been mighty works had been done in Sodom, that's been done, and you would be standing today." Amen. That's right. And in Capernaum, he never done nothing but to heal a few people and told them the secrets of their hearts and walked out. <laughs> that's all. See, they don't know what mighty works are. They think it has to be a great big program where everybody gets up and the judge makes a speech and, and the band's playing, the colors fly, and the, and the well-dressed uh, women and they're uh, tearing in and all the PhD LLDs, the big tall hats and turned around collars and everything. They all have to walk in. That's something great. God says that's foolish. Yeah. And he brings up a little something. I don't know what difference between maybe uh, <laughs> ABCs, Harley. And perform something that just sets the real church afire and the rest of them says a bunch of holder over. God calls that great and the world calls it foolish. Amen. The world calls that great, God calls that foolish. It's just by diversity. Amen. And the thing that God has promised, God will and has done. Amen. Here we are. Now, Still, she remains as she did the Hebrew Eve. She just wouldn't do it. You could raise up the dead. You could see the Spirit of God. Jesus came down, vindicated himself to be the Son of God. First, he started preaching. Well, they thought, well, kind of odd like fella. Uh, who is he anyhow? Well, the first thing you know, people can say, of course, they said before when his forerunner come, John, they say, are you the Messiah? I said, no, nope. but he's standing among you somewhere. See, yeah. why? He knew when his message taken place, what he was to do. Yeah. He knew what he was going to do. Just like Noah kept watching Enoch. When Enoch went, Noah said, very get close to the ark. Yeah. <laughs> the time is at hand. Yeah. Noah kept watching Enoch. See? And John watched for the sign that Jesus told him, or God told him to watch. He said, he's standing right here now, somewhere among you. I don't know him, but I will know him. Amen. Stand
down there. They said, well, aren't you the Messiah? I said, we were sent from the headquarters. <laughs> said, um, the elders all sent us down here. If you're the Messiah, why don't you come up and make yourself known up there, not down here in this bunch of stuff down here. <laughs> You come up there and make yourself known. He said, I'm not the Messiah. He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Yeah. That way as far where their head is they could go. They didn't know nothing about him. And yet they're all looking for him to come. But it couldn't be a guy like that. Oh, my. That would be terrible. What school are you from? None. Have you got your fellowship card? What is it? <laughs> He was anointed of God. Yeah. He says, one thing I have, the axe is laid to the root of the tree. <laughs> now, that's all, he, that's all he had. He talked in terms of a woodsman, not in terms of a clergyman. Vipers, axes, and trees. <laughs> so forth. He, he didn't talk in ecclesiastical terms. But Jesus said there never was a prophet like him. Never a man born of a woman like him until his day. Right. He was more than a prophet. He was a messenger of the covenant. Amen. Stood right between uh, the, the two dispensations coming in. See? More than a prophet. And so then, um, then uh, they didn't know him. They didn't understand him. He was kind of an odd-like sort of fellow. So they dismissed him, see? And um, when Jesus come then, and surely wasn't going to accept him, this carpenter's boy, there was nothing like that, with a black name behind him of the illegitimate. He, they wouldn't see a fellow like that. But... Uh, but look what God did. He took the unlearned, poor fishermen, woodsmen, farmers, and harlots and left the dignitaries set there. Why? What, why did he do it? Why did he do such a thing? Could you imagine? Because that them people recognized him to be the Word. Now let's just watch him just a minute. Here's an old ignorant fisherman. Can't write his name. The Bible said he was ignorant and unlearned. He brings his fish up and sets it down. Goes down there and sees what all this noise is about. But way down deep in him, he knew that the Bible said that the Messiah, all Hebrews, looked for the Messiah. Because there was to be a scriptural thing happen when he comes. There's been a lot of Messiahs raised up and said, I'm here and let them off for the hundreds and and the parish and everything. But see, that was to throw off the real one when it comes. We've had Elijah's mantles and coats and every other thing, but that, that's, that's, that's just to throw off the real thing when he does come. That's right. All kinds of people that's wore the robes and the garments and been buried in all kinds of hoods turned around and everything else. I don't, that just only vindicates like a bogus dollar or shows there's a good one somewhere if he's fine. <laughs> so here he comes. Now, these dignitaries come out and they were so on their substitute while they said, now, if the Messiah comes, he'll certainly come to Caiaphasis, he'll come to our denomination, he'll come to the Pharisees, the Sadducees, that's what you think, he'll come to the Sadducees. And there they were. See, the same thing they have today. Yeah. Now, but when he come, it was strange. He would come, oh, very contrary to what they thought, but he come according to the Word. Yeah. And they didn't know the Word. Yeah. Let me say that real so you it'll sink way down. I want this to get it. That's what's the matter with you today. Amen. See? You don't know the word. Amen. Jesus said you can discern the face of the skies, but the signs of time you can't discern. Say so we Moses so said, You'd know Moses, you'd know me. <laughs> didn't know Moses, and therefore they didn't know. They just know a creed that they Hats down. Amen. Now, let's take this old fisherman. Sets his basket down. Puts his gray beard down. Walks down. People we'll see who it is. Brother said, come on. Let's go down here. That's that same guy. That's that guy they said the other day. I stayed all night with him last night. You know, John, I was talking about, yeah, that wild man down there. Yeah, I heard about him. Well, uh, uh, the whole Simon, you know, said, I heard about him down there. Yeah, it's been uh, two or three months ago down there. Yeah. What he said, and one day he was standing there. He said an odd thing. He said, you know, here he comes right now. He said, how do you know? It looked to us, an ordinary fellow standing there. He said, I see the Spirit of God like a dove coming down. I hear a voice saying, this is him. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am pleased to dwell in. Amen. Then he walked out of the water and baptized him, and so forth. Well, there, he said he knew him. Oh, I don't know, Simon said, I've heard all that long time. 
Well, here he comes up, but down in his heart was a predestinated seed. Amen. Amen. Jesus said so. Amen. Right. Amen. Walks up to him, walks up. So I'll go down to the meeting and see. Walks up there. Jesus stand there, just an ordinary little fellow. Walks up and says, Why, your name is Simon. <laughs> and your father's name is Jonas. <laughs> that deflated him. Wow! That little eternal life seed he struck in there. Amen. Yes, sir. So, Wait a minute. How's that? You never did see me. Neither did you know my dad because he'd been dead for years. But here you come tell me that. Now, I know that the Bible says. Now, I have to not go back to what the elder says. But the Bible said that the Messiah would be a prophet. There he is. That's him. One day he passed through Samaria, going down through there with a bunch of Jews. He left them. This little ill-famed woman come out, maybe a pretty little lady, you know, and she'd been turned out on the street as a kid, and she was going through there. Maybe she was thinking about something. She walked up there and she set the bucket down, and she started to let the window down, you know, get the water. She heard a man say, bring me a drink. She looked around there and said, kind of a middle-aged Jew. She said, say, aren't you a Jew? And you shouldn't do that. It's not customary for you to talk to me. I'm a Samaritan. Said, but if you know who you're talking to, you'd ask me to give you a drink. He said, where's your bucket? Where's your string? Well, he said, the water that I give is life. Amen. So what? Why, well, she said, um, why, well, you all want to worship in Jerusalem. Our fathers worship. Well, I said, that's right. But said, we Jews know what we worship. But said, you know, the time's coming when when uh, man will not worship in Jerusalem or in this mountain. He said, uh, they're going to worship God in the Spirit because He is the Spirit. Spirit and truth. Well, she began to study, you know. He said, go get your husband and come here. She said, my husband? I haven't got any husband. I said, that's the truth. That said, you've been running around with five, got the sixth one now, and said, you've had five, and and you, you know, you, you told the truth. Watch. What was it? That light Amen. struck that seed that had been laying there Amen. that was spoke by God. Amen. Yes, sir. The seed was on the earth. When God moved the water away and the sun hit it, it come up. Amen. That's all it needed was sun. It needed light. Yes, sir. <laughs> and then, when... The Holy Spirit in him moved away her past life and showed it to her. That light struck and she said, Sir, I perceive you're a prophet. She said, We know, I know it, that when Messiah comes, that's what he's going to be. And we ain't had a prophet for hundreds of years. We have never had a true prophet for hundreds of years. And she said, Ah, you tell me about my husband and told me how many have had and so forth. Well, I said, I don't understand this. That when Messiah cometh, well, he's going to do that. But who are you? He said, I'm he. A harlot. And the priest looked around and said, well, they have to answer to the congregation. He said, don't fool that fellow. He's, he's possessed of a devil. Well, that's the difference. That's the same thing today. Same thing today. It's just exactly. Yep. Yes, sir. She, she knew it because the light struck it. They, them fishermen, woodsmen, farmers, tax collectors, harlots, they seen in him what the simple scripture said he would do. Amen. And the Pharisees couldn't see because of their tradition. They couldn't see because of tradition, but the prostitutes, the farmers, and all them, they saw it. All that was predestinated. When the doubts rolled away, the seed went to growing. That's right. What did she do? She said, well, I'm glad I met them. It's all oh, no. Right into the city, she went. She forgot about the water. She said, come see a man who told me the things that I've done. Isn't this the very thing that the Scripture says Messiah is going to do? Isn't this exactly that? And the people could see that same thing. As Jesus Christ said in St. John 14, 12, it will happen again. He said it also in Luke 
when he said as it was in the days of Noah, how God manifested himself in a man and told who was behind him and what uh, Sarah did laughing in the tent and all these scriptures of Malachi and so forth predicted in the last days. Amen. Hebrews 4 said when the word comes back. Amen. Malachi 4 said it would return back. Yeah. Amen. The Hebrews 4 said the word of God discerns Amen. the thoughts that's in the heart. Amen. And they can see it done and walk right away from it. Their traditions hide it and makes it non-effective. Amen. Well, we're just here, that's all. Amen. 